Well, there's no pressure on Bafana to win a friendly match. Uh, the pressure on Bafana to get to the semi-finals and win the Evan Cup of Nations. We are doing a preparation right now, you know. So uh, there's no pressure on the players. They've got to go out there and perform it like they're professionals. They'll do their job and they'll work hard. And that's the bottom line, you know. A pressure to win is no pressure. Yes, we want to win. We want to go out there and do well, and I think we will. We we had a much better situation now than we were uh, in our last uh, trip to Poland and um, and Kenya. I think we'll be much better and we'll be getting better all the time. But uh, Chris Katonga uh, can't say we're under pressure to win a game. It's a friendly match and we're looking at players. We've got, we've got a plan, obviously, but uh, I think it's a great challenge for us. And it's a game like this that we need, you know, just to really to give me an idea where we are. At the moment, I say we, we, we're in a good situation. I think we're much better than we were uh, a month ago. And a month ago, we were much better than we were a month before that, you know. So I think, uh, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a good game for us to have it. We mustn't lose sight of the fact that it's a, it's a Nelson Mandela challenge and it's a good, good cause, which I support. I think it's fantastic, you know, to, to be putting money back into to the kids and to the um, Nelson Mandela Foundation. But coming to the game, I think it's going to be a really, really good test to us. Because like you said, there's no, they're a really good team and they're, they're well organized. They, they've got some very, very useful players on their side. And they are the African champions. So this is going to give me, win or lose, it's going to give me a good idea of exactly where we are and um, how we're progressing. We've had, actually had a lot of bad luck since day one, you know, with injuries. If you remember the first camp, we had to make maybe three or four changes. The next camp, we had to make one or two changes. And this camp, we forced to make a change, you know. So, obviously, not only because of Sanguini, but any player that gets caught up and gets injured in a, a couple of days before, the, before coming to camp is always a big blow to everybody. All the players are very important. It's always nice to have certain players in your team that can play in different positions. You know, it's very, very important for every team to have a player or two players that can play in, in, in two positions. And I'm fortunate to have two players in that respect. I've got uh, uh, um, Intete from Bloomington Selke, the captain, that actually plays centre-half for his club. I've got Anneli and Conker, who's playing at the moment as a centre-back for his club in, in Europe. You know, and I've got I've brought in Gaka now, so I've got, so I've got players who can move around. It's a matter of making the right choice now at the back. But as I said, it is a blow to, to Luis Sanguini because he was getting a good understanding. But this is football and these things happen. No, I'm not disappointed at all. I think it was my duty to go and see Sermon. And um, after five minutes or six minutes, I realized I was wasting my time. I don't think um, he showed enough passion for me to even consider him. For me personally, I think he, and it's not his fault, he was born here, yes, but he's, he's a typical English guy. He's, a, he's, he's, he's a affiliated to the, to the English way of life. He's got no ties with South Africa. And I think if I had have tried to convince him, it would, he would have been in a situation where maybe he thought he was doing us a favor. And I don't think we need favors from any players. And after five minutes or six minutes, that was it. And I decided there and then that I wouldn't pursue it. I wouldn't even try and talk him into it. it I wasn't interested after. We had long discussions about how he's using them, how I'm going to use them. And it was very, it was very important for them because, I mean, for example, uh, De Kutcher's got a new, Ian, Ian uh, is a new coach at Crystal Palace. He's only taken over for two days. So when I told him a little bit more about, uh, about De Kutcher, you know, how he was using them, how I'm going to use them, and how I've seen him play, we passed on some good information, you know. So I think he found it, and I found it very interesting in certain situations, but that was important. As far as Dean was concerned, and, uh, and De Kutcher, I spent a little bit of time with them as well, just motivated them, talking about their game, how well they're doing. I mean, Crystal Palace is on top of the log at the moment, you know. So they, they just beat in uh, Ipswich 5-0, and uh, on the weekend they won 2-1. So they, they're doing a good job, you know, and Dean Furman team was also very happy for me to be there and as I say I was very happy with that trip because of the fact that you know getting those two players is a start now I've got to go see how Serrera is doing he's back in training I've got to go see a lot of players you know players I've got to go to to, to Greece and see Kamala's team and see if I can get him one week early and if I can get just 50 percent of the players early then I think we've achieved a lot so the first trip was excellent only two players were in England only two managers I had to see there and I've seen them and they both agreed to what we wanted. Of course, down the line somewhere, you know, I'll try and do them a favor somewhere because, they, I mean, they are doing me a favor. They're, doing, they're not doing me a favor, they're doing uh, South Africa a favor because they are playing a game on the first, they're playing a game on the third, they're playing a game on the fifth. Those players can actually stay there and play those games by law, by FIFA rules, but they've agreed to, to allow them to come. So I'm very, obviously very pleased about that.
You know, it's exactly what I said before. He was a courtesy core in past him. I never discussed Bafana at all with him. I never discussed his retirement with him at all. That never came up at all. I asked him how he's doing. I asked him about his club. I asked him about his family. I told him how what a great job he had done for us before previously, and he shouldn't feel uh, they let us down in any way. I also told him that we wouldn't, as a country, uh, turn our backs on him because he has been a great ambassador to our country, and that was it. And as I said, I also promised that I would go and see him. The day we got the retirement letter from him, I think I was asked this very same question in the press conference. And I said, of course, I'll go and see him. I'm not going to turn my back on him. But under no circumstances at any stage of the conversation did Bafana Bafana come